that door. Welcome back to the shop, it's good to see you again. Uh, there's no walk down the path in this uh, opening uh, sequence because um, it's turned out all moist outside, uh, which is unusual. I mean, Norfolk in, in England and uh, through the summer, this summer, we've had so little rain. It's been uh, really, everywhere's dry, dry as a bone, and uh, the ground is so hard. I'll be doing a bit of landscaping outside and um, just to dig a hole, I ended up having to use this, just to dig a blasted hole. It's a big hole, mind, but that's in an upcoming video and not the subject of today. So uh, today, I'll get myself unwrapped from the wire. Uh, today, last episode on this mill. Uh, there were a couple of upgrades that needed to be done. The coolant, not the coolant, the washdown pump was pitiful. So uh, I've replaced that. Uh, and also I've dealt with the, um, uh, the chip tray where uh, the, the coolant could splash and splash out over the, over the sides and onto the floor. So uh, this is how I get those done. So uh, in the meantime, I need to think about tidying my workshop up. So uh, join me after the titles. This uh, is my first uh, load of swarf in the, uh, in the chip tray and uh, I don't know if you can see that particularly well in there but there certainly doesn't appear to be anything floating on the surface. The few straggly bits got there but I think that is looking quite good. Let me empty that and then we can uh, weld up a taller section. There we go. That, um, all that gungy stuff on top is the um, oil from the lubricating tank. That scummy surface you can see is this stuff. It's the whey oil that, that gets pumped in automatically in this via this pump through there and into the ways of the machine. These angle grinders are always a bit of an assault on the sensors, so uh, it makes good sense to uh, use the safety kit. But uh, one thing I will say is please ignore the fact I don't actually have a safety guard on this machine. I know. It's amazing I've still got all those fingers. And they still point in the right direction. Yeah, I added a little chamfer for the weld to fill up. I also picked up these the other day. Um, they've been quite useful so far. I've only used them a couple of times, but uh, little magnetic clamps from uh, one of our well-known uh, high street supermarkets. They're quite good, to be perfectly honest. They do some mini ones as well, and I picked up the mini ones too. You don't see them on this video, but I do have a set. Perhaps somebody can help me out here. My welding has actually improved recently and the reason I think is I replaced the, the cylinder. The old um, gas cylinder was, was nearly empty and I thought, do you know what, I don't want to run out in the middle of a weld so I'll go and get another one. And um, at somewhat vast expense I picked up another one of these hobby cylinders. You can see the uh, green and yellow. And um, my welding's improved. 
the moment I connected that gas. Is that a thing? Does anybody know? I mean, gas doesn't go off, clearly, but um, does that make a difference? I don't know. Perhaps some welding expert will let us know. You can see from this um, sped up section that uh, my welding is getting a little bit more even. Um, I think I did have a little bit too fast a wire feed because the, um, there's, there's a little bit too much of build up, I think. But uh, yeah, my welding is certainly improving. It's now just appalling. I thought a coat of paint wouldn't be a bad option. So uh, this is the same colour pewter hammerite type of finish or hammered finish I should say it's not hammerite uh, paint it's a, a different brand but uh, it's the same uh, shade as the machine so uh, it, it looks um, quite smart it looks, sort of blends in nicely as you'll see in a second there we go oh yeah that's good now the gap between the, uh, the funnel under here and the tray is almost nothing. There you go, there's a finger, show you the width. Less than half a finger. I thought it would be good to do some testing, so I ran the machine for half an hour or so with a, a, a tool in the spindle and uh, not a thing came out of it. Not a drop. I was really impressed. It's the day after yesterday and um, I just thought I'd make sure that this looked okay, which it does. Excellent. Right, time to move on. The washdown pump in my CNC is pitiful, so I bought another one. Um, this is a 60 watt, whereas the other one I think was about 7. So um, it should have enough power. It comes with a decent outlet. It comes with three adapters. You just screw them for different diameters of pipe. And uh, even comes with a piece of pipe. I think I paid about $11 pounds for it, which isn't a lot. This stuff though is pitiful. It's, it's less like pipe and more like heat shrink. Anyway, uh, oh, so you just screw those in there. They're gonna be looking at that as like 20 mil. Is that a pipe thread? Don't know. Anyway, matters little. <clears throat> I bought uh, two metres of eight middle bore pipe. Um, hopefully that should be enough, but um, what I'll do is I'll just turn up a quick adapter for one of the, these, um, uh, these spigots uh, and see if I can um, just make sure that my two metre pipe I get enough pressure at the end of it that's the first test otherwise I end up buying another one I had a poke around and I found this little piece of nylon which would be ideal this is the widest um, adapter that, that, it, that uh, it came with the pump so uh, if I turn that up to fit in there then drill it out to fit that Bob's your auntie so to start with I need, that's 19.6. Oops. is chipped. I made this needle scribe many years ago and uh, it's really good at getting the uh, crap out of these little um, screws. There we go. Blimey, it was almost undone. There 
we go. That's good. And Yeti, as our favourite YouTube girl would say. So this is basically just a simple little friction fit bush that uh, fits between the uh, um, pump outlet spigot and the uh, delivery pipe. Piece of cake. Thankfully there's not enough pressure to push it apart. Right. Let's try that out. Numpty move here. I put it in the tank as you see plugged it in and paid absolutely no attention to where it was going so uh, it was slowly flooding the workshop there you go what a numpty thankfully there's not a huge amount of water comes out of it but uh, it does have a decent head and um, it, it does seem to do the job look at that if you could weigh as good as that you'd be really chuffed uh, off camera I turned up a little spigot to go on the end of it out of some um, clear nylon, not clear nylon, acetyl. So I ripped out the old pump and uh, put the new one in through this um, rat's nest of wiring. It looks terrible. I, I, I can't believe I managed such a poor job of that wiring there, but uh, what the hell, it's done. So all that remains is to turn it on and give it a test. There you go. Really pleased with that. That uh, definitely has improved the job tremendously. The previous pump just did not have enough power at all. So uh, I might just turn that into a water feature for the wife. But yeah, this, uh, this does the job really nicely. Really chuffed. Well, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and, and uh, pass the, the videos on if you think they're of value to other people. Um, so I think that's the last video we're going to do on this machine for now. I think I probably need to use it and actually make something with it but uh, I'm I am totally chuffed with how this has turned out. 
We'll have to see how long it lasts, but uh, the inside should be absolutely fine. If the wood starts to get damp and rots away, it's not really the end of the world because it's skinned with glass fibre. I'll just make the glass fibre thicker. So um, yeah, all in all, really pleased with that. And uh, again, thanks for watching. And uh, please stick around for the last little bit. There's a little safety warning you might find interesting. Anyway, take care. See you next time. Bye bye. This is the um, uh, 13 amp UK mains plug. I've just cut off that uh, 60 watt uh, pump, the bigger version of that basically. And um, the cable was about half a square mil. More importantly, I thought I'll just for fun have a look and see what fuse they put in it. They put a 13 amp fuse in it. Now a fuse is not there to protect the the person. A fuse there is a fire protection device and uh, to be perfectly honest at 13 amp this would catch fire well before this fuse went. Just be uh, cautious that should be a 1 amp fuse to, to uh, put it into context not 13.